hey everyone welcome back like what a way what a great day to start with like seriously a big salute to hyderabad police for that encounter of the rapist so i am here to explain the second round of interview questions that were asked me so as I mentioned earlier like there were completely four rounds of interviews for me so i have already there is a, you know, a video on the my on and the questions that were asked to me as part of my round one you can find that in the description link as well so in the in this video i am going to share the i uh, round two interview questions like it was like a managerial round also like there was two people like one was technical guy and another was a manager guy so in this video i am going to share the interview experience uh, like interview questions on angular spring springboard db related things and git related thing so if you are not aware like if you are watching this video for the first time please uh, i have mentioned a note for you people like uh, this is my second round of interview i have already shared the round one interview questions in other video you can find it there so let's start the questions like basically firstly i am sharing the angular questions that were asked to me as part of the interview so the first question was like what is angular so angular is a ui framework it is basically uh like came into existence for building the sp like single page applications so here i have also given a short description about the answer like what is angular so angular is a typescript based open source web application framework developed and maintained by google it offers an easy and powerful way of building front end web based applications and like angular integrates a range of features like declarative templates dependency injection end to end tooling etc that facilitates web application development so one more thing here friends like uh, i have not shared those interview questions in angular like what is the latest version of the angular in the market like what all the features that came up with that latest version because uh, these questions keep on changing like every 6 months angular is coming up with a new version so i have skipped that question here so the next question is like what is spa or single page application technology like how it is differing like how it is different from the traditional web application so the answer is like in traditional web application what we used to do there a client used to request for a jsp or a html page and the server used to render that html or jsp page or asp okay so then again a request used to go again a re response used to come so this was like a, a time consuming process and even the load on the servers was very high so this problem here is a lot of time consumed uh due to due to of reloading also there is a, there was an issue with the reloading like time used uh, it was a time consuming process but whereas in the spa technology we maintain only one page like if i'm not wrong most of the applications will have like index.html from where the flow starts so here index.html is just one page we can say which uh, brings on the all the other pages and maybe the url keeps changing but uh, it is the only page that gets loaded like index.html so the next question here is like differentiate between components and directives in angular so basically components break down the application into smaller smaller parts whereas the directives add behavior to the existing dom element so it is a basic thing that uh, if you are working on an angular application you would definitely know so the next question here was like can you explain service in angular so basically services are like a sing uh, what do you say singleton things in like singleton objects in angular oh, even uh, i have given a small description about the services here so singleton objects in angular that gets instantiated only once during the lifetime of an application are called services and angular service contains method that maintain the data throughout the life of an application so the next point is like primary intent of an angular service is to organize as well as share business logic models or data and functions with various components of angular application and the third point is like the functions offered by angular service can be invoked from any angular component such as controller or a directive so the next question here is like how do you like how do observables differ from promises so this is one of the core question like in every angular interview we can expect this question like what are the what are what is the difference between observables and promises so as soon as like if if i go with the answer like as soon as a promise is made the executions take place but with the observable it is a, a bit different like until and unless you 
subscribe that observable it won't happen like if you go with the uh, like while promises are handled in a single event observable will stream that allows passing of more than one event a callable is made for each event on in an observable observable but whereas in promise we cannot call back that one so then the next question was like explain the directives in angular so there are basically three kind of directives in angular that are attribute directives component directives and structural directives so if you want to go with the definition like directives are the one of the core features of angular they allow an angular developer to write new application new application specific html syntax in actual directives are the functions that are executed by the angular compiler when this find them on the dom so basically the three are like attribute as i already mentioned attribute directive component directive and structural directives so next the next question is like explain the building blocks of angular so there are uh, completely nine i have given them also like there are nine building blocks in angular like if you go with like data binding components data metadata directive dependency injection routing modules services template so i request you to please go through all these nine components like building blocks of angular you may expect this question in almost all angular interview questions so the next question here is all like explain data binding and in how many ways it can be done so in order to like it, it, if you go with the simple definition like data binding is like how you uh, bind the data between the component and the html like the ts and the html that is what is known as data binding so basically there are three ways of doing it like event binding we can bind the event property binding then the two-way binding so i'll go with the answer which i have given here also in order to connect the application data with dom data binding is used it it happens between the template and the component there are three ways to achieve this data binding that is event binding property binding and two-way binding in the event binding enables the application to respond you to the user input in the target environment property binding and enables interpolation of values computed from application data into the html then comes the two-way binding changes made in the application state gets automatically automatically reflected in the new view and vice versa like if you change the object in the html that gets updated in the ts file so ng model directive is used for achieving this type of data binding so the next question here is like what is the use of at the rate input and at the rate output so basically this comes into the picture when we want to communicate between the child component and the parent and the parent like vice versa so if when it comes to the communication of angular components which are in the parent child relationship we use at the rate input in child component where we want to pass the data from parent to child component and at the rate out component is at the rate out is used in child component to receive an event from the child to parent component so these were the questions that were asked me as part of my uh, like the uh, as part of the angular topic so the next uh, the next section i'll be covering up like uh, spring on spring boot interview questions that were asked me as part of the interview to uh, here is a small request like please do share this video to as many as people because this may help someone who is looking out for the interview questions that are being asked in uhg or optum so let's uh, continue with our process like so the next question in uh, like questions are from the spring and the spring wood the first question was like explain in detail what is the difference between like spring boot spring and spring mvc so the question goes like is here like explain in detail spring boot versus spring mvc versus spring so firstly let's take up spring framework what is spring framework most important features of spring framework is dependency injection at the core of all spring modules is dependency injection or ioc which is known as inversion of control when dependency injection or ioc is used properly we can develop loosely coupled applications and loosely coupled applications can be easily unit tested so when comes to spring mvc the so spring mvc frameworks provides decoupled way of developing web applications with simple concepts like dispatcher subdate model and view and views resolver it makes it easy to develop web applications so the continuation of uh, like but but the problem here is with spring and Sim, spring mvc is the most of the configuration that is needed like if you see here how the bean is getting in like bean is getting 
coded link if you want to be in a of dispatcher survey how it is written in xml so lots of boiler code was included here which was uh, like a, a bit lengthy i would say so with the spring boot this this can be eradicated like spring boot solves this problem through a combination of auto configuration and starter projects spring boot also provides a few non functional features to make building production ready applications faster so this were the differences between like spring spring boot and spring msc so the next question here was like what all renderings have you used as part of spring or spring boot so at that moment what all uh, like came to my my mind i have answered them like at the rate bin at the rate service at the rate repository at the rate configuration at the rate controller at the rate request mapping at the rate auto void spring at the rate spring boot application which is the backbone of spring boot like spring boot <coughs> and then at the rate repository at the rate service at the rate controller so this all are the uh, annotations which came to my mind and which i have answered them so the next question here is like what are spring boot starter projects so basically the starters are a set of convenient dependency descript descriptors that you can include in your application like you get one stop shop for all the spring and related technologies that you need without having to hunt through same sa sample code and copy paste loads of dependency descriptors so for example like if you want to get started with using spring and jpa for database access just include the spring boot starter data jpa dependency in your projects and that's it spring boot will automatically download the dependency for you so here the next question is like how to enable auto reload of my application in spring boot so basically if you are using the dependency if you are having the dependency of dev tools so it will do it for you like it will auto restart the application whenever it detects the changes but uh, the only thing here is like it will uh, the dev tools will work only in spring boot version 1.5 or above so the next question is like how do you disable like how to disable a specific auto configuration so basically if you want to disable a specific auto configuration we can indicate it using the exclude attribute of the it that enable auto configuration auto annotation i have also given the sample code for it like inside enable auto configuration we can have exclude whatever we want to exclude the class name can be passed so the next question here is like what is the constructor injection versus setter injection which would you prefer in which scenarios so basically i have also given answer from you uh, for a simpler purpose i have copy pasted it from one of the sites that we i follow personally so you can halt for a moment and go through all the differences so the next question i would like to explain here is like uh, like explain the bean life cycle in spring factory container so there are couple of things that happens when spring is getting insta in initializing so the first thing would be like the spring container instantiates the bean from the bean's definition in the xml file then spring populates all the properties using the spring de injection dependency injection as specified in the bean definition the factory calls set bean name by passing the bean ids if the bean implements the bean name aware interface and the factory calls set bean factory by passing an instance of itself if the bean implements the bean factory aware interface pre process before initialization methods are called if there are any bean post processors associated with the bean if an init method is specified for the bean then it will be called finally the post process after initialization method will be called if there are any bean post processors associated with it the bean so the next question is like explain at the rate request mapping annotation so at the rate request, uh, request mapping annotation is used for mapping a particular http request request method to a specific class or a method in a controller that will be handling the respective request the uh, the annotation can be applied at both the levels like the class level and it, it can be applied at the method level also so the next question here was like explain aop like explain aop which is the abbreviation of expect oriented programming language is a programming technique which allows programmers to modularize cross cutting concerns or behavior that cuts across the typical divisions of the responsibility example of cross cutting concerns can be logging and transaction management the core of aop is an expect it encapsulates behaviors 
that can affect multiple classes into reusable modules so the next question is like what do you mean by accept accept is a modularization of a concern which cuts across multiple objects transaction management is a good, very good example of cross cutting concern in j2w application experts are implemented using regular classes or regular classes annotated with the that expect annotation in the spring framework then the next question was like explain joint point then the joint point a point during the execution of a program is called joint point such as execution of a method or handling of an exception in spring aob a joint point always represent a method execution what is advice an advice taken by expect at the particular joint point is known as an advice so spring aop uses an advice as an interceptor maintaining a chain of inter interceptors around the joint point the next question is like what is swag or did you implement it in spring boot so basically swagger is widely used for visualizing your apis so with by hitting a one api and like one url you'll be getting to know like what is the input json that needs to be passed to that api or what is the or like what that api would be responding with what kind of response or we can even watch the json object here also like so that is what i have given here so swagger is widely used for visualize visualizing the apis using swagger ui to provide an outline sandbox for front-end developers swagger is tool for generating visual representation of your restful web services specifications and full framework implementations so it enables documents to be updated at the same speed as the server when properly defined by swagger consumers can use a minimal amount of implementation logic to understand and interact with the remote services therefore swagger eliminates the guesswork by when calling the service so basically it is a represent it is a ui front end representation of a api we can say in a simple words so the next question is really was were related to database related questions like what all like were asked to me so the first question like here was like what are the different types of joints you know so i have explained him like what all joints i know in detail so then he was asking me like what what is the difference between the inner join and the outer join then there was a question on stored procs like what is a stored proc then there was a question on triggers then i have I was like what are the triggers have you ever implemented them like have you ever coded them so like that questions were asked to me then there were like the interviewer asked me for a few queries to write me like i have also given like find the highest salary second highest salary written employees whose salary is greater than their managers so these were the questions that were asked to me as part of db related things so the next question like section was like related to git related questions i have also like covered them also so the questions were like what is the difference between git and svn what is a conflict in git and how do you resolve it then the next question was like explain me to write few git commands which i have done so with this i conclude the interview here like this way all the questions that were asked to me as part of my round two so so that's it from my end uh, thank you for watching all no, please do subscribe for all the updates because there are a couple of interviews there are many interviews that are coming up so don't miss a chance to catch all the updates so thank you for watching